The recent events and controversies surrounding Russian and Belarusian players in international tennis competitions have ignited global debates within and outside the tennis community. The sports landscape has been profoundly affected, with political tensions taking center stage. As a result, there's a growing public outcry and a burning question on whether Russian and Belarusian tennis players should be subject to another ban in professional tennis. In this video, we'll take a look into the topic of to ban or not to ban Belarusian and Russian players from tennis competitions. Kind of difficult because obviously there's a whole political situation, but I think it would have been fair to let them play under a neutral flag. I think it's really tough. I, I understand the decision that was made. Belarus and Russia have a long history in the world of sports, and both countries have been responsible for the development of some of the world's most gifted athletes. In recent years, many tennis players from Belarus and Russia have managed to be successful and win big tournaments, from Masters 1000 to Grand Slams. Starting with Belarus, the WTA world is currently being taken over by the new star from Minsk, Arina Sabalenka. She's currently number two in the ranking and has managed to win in 2023 one Grand Slam at the Australian Open and one Masters 1000 in May at the Matua Madrid Open, totaling so far 13 singles titles in her career. In total, three of her 13 titles were obtained in 2022 and 2023 alone. And from Russia, we've got Daniil Medvedev as the next Russian tennis star after Marat Safin. Daniil Medvedev is currently in the top three ATP ranking and he's managed to win 19 singles titles in his career. The most notable wins were one Grand Slam at the US Open in 2021 and ATP Masters 1000 Championships at 2019 Cincinnati and Shanghai, 2020 Paris, 2021 Toronto, and 2023 Miami. In total, he managed to win six of his 19 titles in 2022 and 2023 alone. But these players could have never won those recent tournaments if the international ban had been imposed on them for all tennis competitions. Why is that? Well, unless you guys have been living under a rock in the last two years, there was a certain crazy event that shocked the world in 2022. On February 24th, 2022, Russia started a special military operation and invaded Ukraine as a major escalation and continuation of the conflict that started back in 2014 with the annexation of the Crimean Peninsula. On the first day of the war in February 2022, the world's attention was fixated on the unfolding crisis in Ukraine, as major newspapers worldwide dedicated their front pages to the events. The US newspaper New York Post had on their front page, War in Europe whereas the New York Times indicated that Russia attacks as Putin warns world, Biden vows to hold him accountable. The British newspapers, The Daily Express, Metro and Daily Star, all quoted on their front page the comments from the UK Defense Secretary Ben Wallace, who said that the Russian leader has gone full tanto. The horrific actions in Ukraine did not take long until they had significant repercussions on sports events worldwide, including tennis. Consequently, the WTA and ATP decided to indefinitely suspend events in Russia and Belarus while the ITF suspended the memberships of the Russian and Belarusian tennis federations, leading to their exclusion from international team competitions. However, Russian and Belarusian players retained the ability to compete in non-national tournaments. But this wasn't enough for the tennis world, at least not for the UK tennis authorities. On April 20th, 2022, the AELTC, responsible for Wimbledon, declared a ban on Russian and Belarusian players, citing concerns about endorsing the Russian and Belarusian regimes. The LTA, the governing body of British tennis, followed suit, imposing a ban across all its events, including the Eastbourne International and the Queen's Club Championships. Wimbledon and UK for stepping up and showing the world an example. It was a huge blow to the Russian and Belarusian players. This was the first time since after World War II that players have been banned from competitions based on nationality, reminiscent of the exclusion of German and Japanese players during that period. Then reactions came from inside and outside the tennis world. Among the first ones to react were the Ukrainian players Elena Svitolina, Marta Kostyuk, and Sergei Stokovsky that made a joint statement. In times of crisis, silence means agreeing with what is happening. We noticed that some Russian and Belarusian players at some point vaguely mentioned the war, but never clearly stating that Russia and Belarus started it on the territory of Ukraine. If applicable, we demand to exclude and ban Russian and Belarusian athletes from competing in any international event as Wimbledon has already done. 
In addition, Nigel Huddleston, the British sports minister at that time, also said, the UK has taken a leading role internationally to make clear that President Putin must not be able to use sport to legitimize Russia's barbaric invasion of Ukraine. Much support was also shown by the tennis federations from all Nordic European countries being on the same side as the UK authorities for the total ban of the Russian and Belarusian players. But things didn't end here. The UK organization, AELTC, received criticism from various tennis figures for deviating from the consensus of the ITF, ATP, WTA, and other Grand Slam tournaments, which allowed Russian and Belarusian players to compete as neutrals. The ATP and WTA released statements opposing the ban as discriminatory while condemning the invasion. The ban also received vocal opposition from numerous tennis players. Among the first ones to react were Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic. Nadal stated, I think it's very unfair on my Russian tennis mates, my colleagues. It's not their fault what's happening at this moment with the war. Whereas Djokovic said, I will always condemn war. I will never support war being myself a child of war. However, I cannot support the decision of Wimbledon. I think it is crazy. When politics interfere with sport, the result is not good. The reactions from the banned tennis players did not take long. The Russian player Andrei Rublev commented that the ban was illogical and discriminatory. To be honest, the reasons that they give, there is no meaning. There's no logic for what they propose. The things that happen now is complete discrimination of us. His compatriot, Daniel Medvedev, broke the silence and also voiced his disappointment about being barred from competing at Wimbledon alongside other Russian and Belarusian players. He said, On the one hand, I can understand the decision, and on the other hand, I find it unfair. This is a delicate situation because it sets a precedent and puts other sports competitions in an uncomfortable position. So how did it all end with the Wimbledon ban? On May 20th, 2022, a groundbreaking decision was made by the ITF, ATP, and WTA. Wimbledon results would not grant ranking points in light of the ban on Russian and Belarusian players. However, players from these countries could still earn points at Eastburn and Queens tournaments. The AELTC expressed disappointment, while players such as Andy Murray and Casper Ruud criticized the ruling as unjust. The WTA, in an additional and bold move, imposed fines of $750,000 on the AELTC and $250,000 on the LTA on July 4th, 2022 for the ban, which both organizations have appealed. On December 7th, 2022, the ATP fined the LTA $1 million for the ban. In December 2022, there were reports that the AELTC was reconsidering the ban for the 2023 championships. Then, on March 31, 2023, the AELTC officially lifted the ban, stating that Russian and Belarusian players would be permitted to compete if they abstain from endorsing the invasion and provide signed declarations of their neutrality. The decision of the Wimbledon officials remains controversial, as it's a 360-degree turn from what they initially decided back in 2022. And as expected, this decision did not remain indifferent to the tennis world. On the one hand, Iga Sviatek, the current number one WTA player, indicated that the tennis community might have missed a chance to make a powerful statement to Moscow by not implementing a complete ban on players from Russia and Belarus following the invasion of Ukraine. I feel like uh, tennis from the beginning could do a little bit better. In on the other hand, the WTA and ATP made a joint statement. We are pleased that all players will have an opportunity to compete at Wimbledon and LTA events this summer. It has taken a collaborative effort across the sport to arrive at a workable solution which protects the fairness of the game. As the conflict between Russia and Ukraine unfolded, tennis players from Russia and Belarus found themselves entangled in the complexities. Despite being affected by the situation, they shouldn't be scapegoats or held accountable for the war. They have no direct or indirect involvement and should not be blamed or subjected to hatred for circumstances beyond their control. You started this war. You're leading this war. You can stop this war. The ban on Russian and Belarusian tennis players has been a tumultuous saga, exposing the entanglement of sports and politics. It prompts reflections on fairness, inclusivity, and the role of international events during geopolitical tensions. While lifting the ban at Wimbledon may provide relief for Russian and Belarusian players, the impact of this episode is likely to be felt for years to come.